Hey everybody, I get asked to help out on other video production events where other companies fairly often, and there's some things that I see going on in a lot of those situations where the people are making their jobs a little bit harder to do than it needs to be, and I want to kind of go over and talk about some, one, of the, one of those things today, and that is networking. So basically what I see all the time is someone will take a network switch like this, they'll take the internet connection from the venue where they happen to be working, plug that in, and then plug in all the devices they need to be using. So switcher, uh, HyperDeck recorder, computer, whatever. And that does get them on the internet, but it's certainly not the most easy way of doing things. So I want to talk briefly about a better way of doing things, and I want to recommend a very specific piece of equipment that will make your job as a video producer a lot easier when it comes to networking. So let me actually pull that out. All right, so the device that I'm referring to is, of course, a router. And I'm going to recommend this specific model for a reason that I'll, for some reasons that I'll discuss in a little bit. But having a little router like this will make your job when it comes to doing any sort of networking as a video producer much, much, much easier. This one in particular, again, I'll talk about why in a bit. But what this does is it allows you to configure all of your equipment once and never have to reconfigure of it ever again. So what I see happening all the time is when people go into a venue and they plug in the internet connection from the venue into a switch and then plug in all their equipment, the equipment takes on whatever IP addresses that that network for that venue uses, which means every time you go to a new venue, you're reconfiguring everything, which can take a lot of time. Not only that, it can potentially introduce a possible security issues because if they've got some computers on the network that are infected by viruses or whatever, all of a sudden your equipment is now vulnerable to that as well. So it's a good idea to make sure that your network is actually isolated from the venue that you happen to be working in. And the easy way to do that is with a little router. Of course, any consumer grade router will handle this. But this router in particular does some things that will make your life much easier. So let me hook this up and I'll actually talk about some of those things. First of all, I need to provide power. Then I need to connect it to my local area network, which is my switch here. So I'm going to plug into one of the LAN ports with that. And then plug into one of the ports on the switch there. Then, of course, plug in the network from the venue into the WAN port on the back here. And now, just by doing that, I have created my own separate network, which is just my equipment. I provided a wireless network that I can hook my mobile devices to, my phone, iPad, whatever, not have to reconfigure it to work with the venue's Wi-Fi or whatever. I'm in a secure environment with consistent IP addresses, and I know that things are secure and isolated from the rest of the world. So it, there's a lot of advantages here to doing this. All right, so let me just briefly show you what some of that looks like. All right, so I'm going to come over here into ATEM software control. And I'm already connected here, but if I have my own network, I never have to go through this uh, procedure here of selecting my switcher every time I launch on a new network because it's always going to be located at the same IP address no matter where we go because it's on its own separate network. The other thing I can do here is to actually take the time to configure this to talk to my HyperDeck recorders because they're on, going to be on consistent IP addresses. And therefore, it makes it much easier to control those hyperdecks from the switcher and ATEM software control at the same time. I don't have to reconfigure that every single time I plug into a new network. The other advantage to this is you don't have to reconfigure any of your computers or mobile devices either because they can use the wireless network that you're providing for yourself. It makes it much easier to deal with that. It also keeps all of your equipment totally isolated from the rest of the world so that if something bad were to happen to the network that you're plugged into, it's not going to affect any of your equipment. That also means that nobody's going to be jumping on your Wi-Fi because you don't give out that password. Now, I mentioned just a minute ago that this particular router, this one from GLINet, is kind of it's a bit of a godsend for those of us who work in video production and are constantly working at different locations. You know, we get into a venue, we don't necessarily know what our internet connection situation is going to be there. This provides the most options in order to make sure that we have good, reliable internet of anything that I've found. And let's take a look at the, the menus in the router, and I'll show you what I mean. So here is the admin panel for this GeoINet router. I'm on the internet page here, which is the, the first one. And we can see something that's a little unusual here compared to a lot of the routers that are out there. And you can see that we actually see four options for internet connections here. 
And what makes this one kind of unusual compared to others is that you can actually have three of these four connected at any given time. So you can have your Ethernet plugged in. You can have it tied, logged into another Wi-Fi network, so the Wi-Fi network at a venue. And you've also got the option for tethering either to a smartphone or a hotspot or a cellular modem. And you can have all of those connected at the same time. So what that gives you is multiple connectivity options. So you get into a venue that doesn't have an easily accessible Ethernet connection, you jump on their Wi-Fi. You shouldn't use the Wi-Fi, but you can if you absolutely have no other choice. So what I can do after I've connected to Ethernet, if I want to add another layer of redundancy, or if the venue that I'm working in doesn't have Ethernet available, I can actually connect to their Wi-Fi network and use that to provide my internet connection for all of my network. Let me show you how that's done. So what I'm going to do here is I go into the admin panel for the, for the router, and under the repeater section, I'm going to say connect. And after a few seconds, it's going to show a list of available networks. I can scroll to the one that I want, click on it, type in the password, hit apply. And there, after a few seconds, we're actually connected to, to that network. So what's happening here is that this router is now connected to that Wi-Fi network in order to provide internet access for all of my equipment. It's not, that's not the Wi-Fi network that I'm providing for myself. It's an external network, such as one provided by the venue, which is then used to provide networking for an internet connection for all of my equipment. So it's repeating that Wi-Fi network that's somewhere else, but it's adding that additional layer of security you get by having your own router. It also gives you the option of using a hotspot like this or even plugging in your phone to get an internet connection over a USB cable that way as well. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in my T-Mobile 5G router here. And in just a moment, we'll see that tethering will actually show up here on the router's menu. Okay, there we go. So now I have an internet connection through the Ethernet. I have an internet connection by jumping onto the Wi-Fi here. And I also have an internet connection through the hotspot. Now, if you happen to install the version 4 firmware, which is currently in beta, on this device, we can come over here into Network and say Multi-WAN. And here we can actually prioritize these interfaces, decide which one we want to provide the internet most of the time. And we can also set the failover attributes as well. So we can say, for, say for example, if our inter primary internet connection goes down in 10 seconds, then automatically fail over the Wi-Fi. If that goes down, automatically fail over to our cellular tethered. We can actually configure that here. So we've got some options there as well. The other thing we have here is load balancing, which is something that, again, is only available in version 4 of the firmware, which kind of takes your all your internet traffic and splits it over multiple different devices so that some of it's going out through Ethernet, some of it's going through Wi-Fi, some of it's going through your tethered cell phone or hotspot or USB modem. That way, you got, you'll have additional bandwidth than you would otherwise. So you might want, might want to be a little bit careful with that if you're actually doing some streaming that uh, doesn't tend to go super well. But you, certainly having the failover option is certainly very handy and something that really helps to make sure that your stream is going to get out even if somebody happens to trip over a cable or whatever might be going on. Now, it probably goes without saying, but I'm going to say it anyway. This router does have built-in Wi-Fi, so it is an access point, so you're able to provide a wireless network for your mobile devices like your cell phones and tablets and laptops and whatever. It functions that way very much like other routers that are out there. So it's this multi-WAN capability that makes this router unique compared to other ones that are out there. And fortunately, they don't really charge a huge premium for that. So this router that I'm looking at right here, this is what we call the Barrel, the GLMT1300 from GLINET. Uh, it's roughly $70 to $80, but they have one that's called the Opal, which is half that price uh, and provides most of the same features, just a little bit slower on the Wi-Fi. So uh, if you want to save a few bucks, you can pick up the Opal instead of the barrel, or if you want to get something even fancier, they have some uh, higher end models at, that are options as well. So links for both of those products are available in the video description down below and also popped up just as I was describing them a moment ago. Now, one of the other options that these actually support as well, which, which can be particularly handy, uh, is VPN. So take a look very briefly at that. So if we'll go into the menu here and take a look at the VPN section, we have 
OpenVPN, we have WireGuard, and we have Tor. There's other things that are available as well. This, this router does allow you to install apps, and it supports some other things as well. But what this does is allows you to set this router up as either a client VPN client to connect to another network from somewhere else, or as a VPN server so that others can connect to your small little network when you're on site in a venue, assuming that the internet connection you're plugged into will allow that. But what that would allow you to do is have somebody working remotely and be able to connect into your network and, to, and be able to function as if they were there locally on site with you. One potential use of that maybe would be to have a remote technical director where you take the multi-view output of your switcher, run that into a Zoom meeting on your laptop, and then they're able to run ATEM software control from somewhere else, and VPN into your network, and they can use Zoom to see the multi-view and then use ATEM software control on their own computer in order to dial into your network and perform the job of technical director remotely. The VPN client feature, on the other hand, allows you to have a little bit of additional protection for your own network traffic. So if you maybe are working at a sketchy venue and you don't really trust their internet connection, you can set this thing up to route all of your internet connection traffic out through a VPN server somewhere on the internet or even your office if you have a VPN server set up there. And that way you can make sure that your traffic is not going to be spied upon by anybody in transit. It's going to be safe. And it's also going to appear to be coming from the location of your VPN server instead of the venue where you're at. So if you happen to be doing things that are region sensitive, you're able to bypass those region restrictions using that feature as well. And that traffic applies to everything that's connected to that network, not just an individual computer that might be running a VPN software. Uh, it works for every device that's connected to that network. I will also mention that these routers are actually very fast. We take a look at the speed test results here. So on my gigabit network connection that I have here, it's able to do 930 megabits both up and down with a two millisecond ping time. So absolutely no worries about speed with this router. Now this thing is a great little product and I very highly recommend that everybody who works in various different venues around when they're doing video production has something like this, whether it's this one or something that's higher end from another manufacturer. This is going to be something that's going to save you a lot of time and effort when you're setting up your networks for your various video production events. And it's going to save you a lot of time, a lot of, a lot of frustration, making sure that everything is pre-set up properly before you even arrive so that you're not reconfiguring those things on site. It's going to save you a lot of time and effort there. So I especially love that this thing has connectivity in multiple different ways. So if I can get, get into a, an Ethernet connection in the venue, that's going to be great. But if I don't, then I can always log on to the Wi-Fi. And barring that, I can always use a hotspot or even plug out my cell phone, plug in USB with a cell phone, use that, or even one of these little USB modems. Plug that in, that gives you internet for everything that's on your network, not just a specific device. And it's just super, super nice to have that capability and have that lifeline there in case something goes wrong. So, and just an additional bonus having the automatic failover from one connection to another. So if you have the option to be able to plug in ethernet and Wi-Fi and plug in a hotspot at the same time, it just will silently fail over from one to another if one of those happens to go down. So a great little product here, highly recommended. And I really highly recommend you pick up one of these for your own video production setup as well. So I think it's going to about do it for now. So thanks, everybody, for watching. Thanks for joining us. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. I do content related to video production. I try to do about once a week. I've been kind of bad about that the last little while. Last little while. I'm going to be doing better, I promise. Uh, but anyway, so if you're in the video production world, please subscribe to the channel, and I'll have content for you. I've got tons of videos, uh, 300 videos, I think, at this point, uh, on this channel related to video production that I've been producing for the last six plus years. and. Yeah, so if, if that's the sort of thing that you're into, please cons consider subscribing and watching some of those old videos there. Especially of interest to a lot of people is when I built out my video production trailer. I documented that process along the way. So anyway, um, please make sure that you also like and share this video with others. That's very much appreciated too. So thanks everybody for watching and have a fantastic day.